Sub Podcast episode 116. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Virtually across from me at the same time, we have, you know them, Lawrence DeLoach and Luke Trevisi. What's up, guys? We're here. What's going on? Um, and to be honest, guys, uh, you know, we were just discussing before we hit record, this isn't a great week to try to dissect sneakers. There's not a lot going on. Uh, there's not a lot of releases that came out. Um, it's sort of, uh, we're in the midst of a uh, reform uh, in this country, and yep. that's sort of the focus here. It's not about how you lace your shoes. Mm-hmm. So I like to uh, choke my laces personally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just sort of weird. Look, well, this is going to be a short one, I guess. So um, yeah. I mean, one thing um, that is uh, going on is a, there's a lot of donating and fundraising, which is great. Most of the, mm-hmm. you name a streetwear brand now, you name a sneaker company, they're doing something. So that's that's an awesome thing. Um, one thing that was misconstrued, or I don't know how, he, how to even put it, or like misunderstood, was apparently Virgil uh, donated fifty dollars, and that's only what he showed the public at one time. He was just like, "Yo, donate and fifty bucks," and we know him to be the uh, men's uh, creative director of Louis Vuitton. So a lot of people <laughs> were so mad that he only donated fifty bucks. A lot of people were mad. Uh, he came out to say that. Uh, Hey guys, I'm black. Fuck you. And also, I've donated like twenty grand. Um, uh, so I mean, that I don't know. You guys have anything on that? I thought it was real funny the way he was getting roasted. The <laughs> yeah, it was like, funny. Twitter the, is it was funny in the moment, and then when they when he explained himself, I was like, oh, they're just why would you do? It, time to stop now, people, please. Well, I think yeah. I think honestly, what happened is, I mean, it's just it's not just the fifty dollars, you know. It's the it's the fact that uh, he basically. Uh, rip people for for looting. Uh, yes, his boy Sean mm. Sean uh, Sean store Sean in uh, round two, when a lot of people were yeah, and a lot of people were like you know even Sean kind of backed off and he you know he was like you know whatever for the people and Virgil basically condemned people and was like you know you're, you're this is what I mean when streetwear is dead and and I think a lot of people were like fuck you like as a black man who the f- like what is your problem. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you really value, like, uh, merchandise over people's lives. So I think that was, like, you know, one of the things that caused people to be, like, to look at Virgil really awkwardly. Mm-hmm. And then the $50 donation, when you no. so when you have, like, those two, and it's, like, you know, it, and, and it, it became one of those things where Virgil was associated with Kanye West, and we, and the whole Don C and all those guys, and, and it mm-hmm. seemed like, it was more of an issue, not with them in terms of, you know, I mean, you know, Kanye, he's had his issues with, you know, Trump, you know, wearing Make America Great Again hats and his his, his views uh, in politics. So you have that when you have like these guys like Virgil who, who've created brands like Off-White, uh, you know, Pyrex, who we're talking about, you've profited off of black culture. And mm-hmm. you're, and you see black men being murdered on camera, and you still seem to uh, value uh, the three hundred dollar t shirt that was looted, uh, opposed to you being upset about some a black man being murdered on camera by a police officer. Or, you know, I think that's where people got pissed off. The the I think if Virgil did the fifty dollar donation, I think you know obviously people would probably would definitely still make fun of it because he's fucking you know he's got money, but. I think it it wouldn't have been as bad. People just didn't like, you know, his take on this whole situation. Yeah, I mean, so. he's been getting a lot of hate from all angles just because of the positions he's in. And then, yeah, the way he framed that wasn't that great. Um, a better way he could have framed it, I don't know. Uh, he probably should have thought about it a little better. But I do want to highlight Bobby Hundreds for a second because he had a great uh, point where someone was tweeting him that, like, hey, I hope your store's okay. And he was like, dude, it's not about the store. The store – store would be fine like, like black lives are the important thing mm-hmm. um and that's sort of the forward face that people should be having a lot of people are like yo the protest is bad but yeah like shouldn't be doing this to black people so it's like that framing i think that got most people upset you know yeah I think that's, that's what it really is i mean you know a lot of the interesting thing about it is a lot of these stores really didn't or a lot of these people in the mix really didn't speak up until their store was looted yeah. so mm-hmm. prior to the store being looted they seemed pretty quiet on the issue you know, the issue of black men, you know, black people being, you know, um, treated less than human and people, you know, on tape by, you know, I think a lot of people didn't, no one really 
some of them, you know, so obviously I'm not going to say all, but you have certain people who said nothing about Black Lives until their store was ransacked. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So then yeah, it also, yeah. we, now we start looking at it, it's like, all right, well, you know, how much were you really, you know, obviously how much are you really into this? How, you know, where's your heart coming from? So I think that's one thing that I really, uh, was a takeaway for me. Um, you know, but then, you know, for every, for every, um, Virgil, there's a, you know, the owner of Ben and Jerry's who, you know, pretty, who came out with a hard stance and was like, listen, black lives fucking matter. And, you know, if you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. And then they got arrested. The owners yeah. got arrested. There you Yo, go. Those guys are G's. Fucking yeah. G's. Yeah. There you, go. there you go. So, you know, I think, um, I think that's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's either we've gotten to the point in society now where it's either you're with it or you're on the other side. And, um, and we're seeing that right now. I mean, like, like we said, I mean, all these stores that were, that were looted and destroyed, I mean, their, their insurance will, will yeah. be able to, you know, mm-hmm. cover the, the, the merchandise, the, the damage property value, property, whatever, you know, um, I, we did have an interesting uh, talk and discussion last week about uh, in terms of like, you know, uh, con- uh, consignment shops um, and people who, you know, place their goods in, in the hands of these stores. And, um, and I wonder what, what's going to be the, the last and ramifications of, especially like a, a place like flight club. Right. You know, because here's the thing. I mean, you know, if you, if you're, I saw on Twitter, it was a guy, he had a pair of red Octobers and, a flight club that was uh that you know obviously it was looted it was lost you know so it was gone and um and i i think you know obviously once again i mean the issue here is obviously that black lives matter but i you know in terms of our podcast being a street wear and sneaker i do wonder what's going to happen to people who put tens of thousands of dollars into these consignment shops you know are they going to be fucked yeah, uh, I saw an article the other day on Complex that was saying how, uh, as of right now, uh, fight, flight club people, they're fucked. There's, they're not getting their money back. That's it. You see, that's going to be very interesting because, I mean, if, if, if that happens and, you know, and, and people, you know, you, you trust the shop to put a, you know, sneaker that, you know, is $5,000, $10,000 in there, and now you, you, you get fucked, it's almost as if, will people going forward trust right the shop because yeah. i mean i granted i mean it's a once in a lifetime thing that happened you mm-hmm. know fight club's been in business for you know close almost 20 years you know yeah uh, but at the same time it's like if you don't if you're not protecting your customer or you know taking the loss in some situation it's like what incentive does the consumer have to drop off very expensive shoes with with yeah none you're honestly better off at this point for a while uh to just use that these platforms as a price reference and just do it yourself right because like you said lawrence i mean like the trust i don't know if it's going to be there if they can't help anybody but i don't even know what they would do they they didn't have like insurance on people's shoes they had it on their property well i'm sure i'm sure shoes have to be insured i mean you have a you know, I mean, something has, there has to be, you just can't, you, you insure property, but I mean, there's, there's merchandise in there that, they ha- that has to be insured. Yeah. Yeah, there's but a, like that, anyone who lost their pair of mags isn't getting any insurance money. They might, I mean, they it, might it might be their contract, like it might be a case by case basis, but it said for the most part, they're fucking, I don't know what happens at that higher tier, because there could yeah. always be like a clause where it's like, if something happens, We'll give you like 10% back, but I don't know if they'll get, I don't see them getting the whole cost of the shoe back. I mean, yeah, I guess I'm ignorant to that idea. So if anyone knows, DM us right in to, you know, DM whatever. Because I've never dealt with shoes that high level at, for resale. And I don't know anybody who would yeah. do that. Most of the people I know just wear the shit, no matter how much money it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so. It's uh, it's very uh, it's very interesting to see what the uh, what what happens going forward with at least on that in that angle in that aspect of what's going on in, in the world. Right. Like, 
what do you do? Because I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, Flight Club is very, um, you know, they're a tourist attraction there. You know, they deal with so many people, especially, you know, us being in New York, you know, they, you know, you ever go to Flight Club, I mean, to drop off some sneakers. I mean, there's people coming in and out that they're just dumping shoes off. And you have these resellers who are putting, you know, a million dollars worth of product in the Flight Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, that that was like the main thing that was very interesting to me this week, you know, just to see. Um you know, also you see a lot of people uh, like on uh, these apps offering offer up. Like I, I saw some screenshots oh. of dudes, you know, selling uh, mm-hmm. the, the 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 sneakers that they looted out of these uh, consignment shops and these short stores. Um, Why they would label them as loot shoes? I have no idea. Because not only are you admitting, did? yeah, some of them, not all of them, <sighs> but I did see some that were like, "Yo, I got this in the loot." And I, I maybe to explain how, why, because a lot of those loot stuff were lowly priced. I don't know what you saw, L, but like the shit I saw, they were low on the well, low range of things. Yeah, I mean, I think you almost, unfortunately, you almost have to, you know, put some type of disclaimer because if you have a pair of shoes that, you know, on the secondary market is going for, for five, six thousand, you're like, hey, I'll take fifteen hundred right now. You know, it's almost yeah. like, all right, this is too good to be true. But, you know, mm-hmm. when you start saying, you know, I got these from, the yeah. Loot. yeah. <laughs> there's there's a moral there's a moral question I have for both of you in this. Um are you above purchase would you purchase a pair of looted sneakers? Oh, that's a great question. And you know what? I don't know it uh depends on the price in the shoe, I'll have to say. I don't know if I'm above it, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. Uh I would like to say I am. Mm-hmm. But like, if you come to me with some Yeezy ones, and you're the like, say like the black pair, yo, black e- black Yeezy ones, um, four hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm buying that. <laughs> buying those, okay. But uh, I'm not I'm not buying like the the Travis Scott friends and family fours for a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So, I guess yeah. if it's so it really like, has to be a hookup. Wait, wait, so you're telling me because the the Travis Scott friends and family fours sold for I think two grand on StockX, if I'm correct. Yeah. It's a ten thousand dollar shoe. So yeah. you're telling me you wouldn't buy a ten thousand dollar shoe for two grand if you had the opportunity? I don't think so, because you know what? Um uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you're and, not above uh, that. No, I'm not. I'm not above that, but I, you know what? I guess it's a price thing. I guess if the price is just so low where it's like, I, if, I'm, if I don't buy them, I'm stupid, yeah. then I'll buy them. But if, I'm not, if, if somebody explained to me that they were looted, I'd probably get them because like I've, I've seen some, like I almost bought a pair of fake Travis Scott's the other day. Like, I'm not like, I didn't know they were fake. They were like 1200 uh, on eBay. And I was like, all right, let me look at the tags. And yes, they were fake. But for a second, I was like, ah. 1200 not bad. So, you know, I'm not above it. I mean, what about you, Al? What do you think? Uh, in terms of buying looted sneakers, that's really, it's, uh, it's interesting because it, it, it's almost as if, you know, what's the sneaker? That's, <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it really boils down to me. And, and is this a good enough deal? I mean, it's hard for me to see. I, I think, you know, it's so interesting for me. And I, I think I've had such bad experience. I've had a bad experience buying off of someone that you know doesn't have a receipt or you know where and i think that that kind of opens up the all right yeah and like you said, remember what we said is like if a shoe if you know the shoe you have to pay four thousand dollars for a shoe and someone says it's a thousand dollars that opens up the, the what's going on here so that's right. why they do say it. a lot of people like these alluded um it to me it all depends on the shoe um, but I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm 75%, 80, 75 to 80% no. And, you all know, right. and, but, you know, like I said, it all depends on, you know, what they're coming at you with. I think, yeah, yeah I think realistically, if I, if it was on, if it was an online sale, I probably wouldn't do it. If it was somebody like it was an in-person sale and I knew the person and they were like, I'm just trying to get rid of these so they can't be traced you know, back. Because they hot. Yeah. yeah. And I'd be like, yes, 100%. Yeah. 
But like I'm, when it's online, yeah, I've had I've been burned so many times in the past mm -hmm. where it's like with my luck, these are fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have to agree. It'd have to be from a trusted person because I've definitely bought shit that's fallen off the truck before. Like that's how I got my Wii U. Like mm -hmm. whenever. Boy knew a guy who ran a who had a Best Buy truck, and he I said one day I was like, yo, I, I really want that Wii U. I'm gonna save up to buy that. And he's like, I could probably get you one. Fall off the truck. Next week, I got a Zelda edition, and I was the happiest dude of my life. I ruined some kid's Christmas, for sure. Yes, you did. Yes, you and did. And I feel bad about that part, but no, you don't. I'm not. You haven't I lost do. sleep Fuck over you. that ever. <laughs> I've, I, never I heard, I've never heard you in a, in a moment of panic be like, oh, you know, this one time I did this thing, and I think this is coming back to me. No, I've never seen you. <laughs> Stressed about stealing a young child's Zelda Wii. Well, I just I don't say I I didn't steal it. It yeah, was just yeah. like this situation. It was presented in a way where I was like, I got to get rid of this. You want it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm not above it, but I'm similar uh, percentage as you, uh, L. Where I need and what you said, uh, Luke. I need to know the person. And it depends on the shoe. It depends on all that shit. Yeah, because once, the, you know, once, you know, when you do these person-to-person -person transactions, once the person's gone, you know, they're gone. Yeah. You know, if you don't know yeah. them, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So you have to, um, you know, I think that that's, that's what makes, you know, all this interesting. Um, so where do you, honestly, what do you see happening, you know, after, you know, things in terms of, you know, retail opens up? Uh, I know LA is a completely different animal because, you know, and, and same with New York, a lot of these stores have been looted really bad. Uh, do you see Flight Club returning to LA or what's going on? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I think uh, at some point everything will uh, sort of quote unquote be back to normal, but there has to be a rebuild. You know what I mean? They have to reacquire new inventory. Uh, and if they can't because there's a lack of trust or feel like betrayal, then I don't know. I mean, the stock, StockX and, like, these online platforms are already fucked up because the, the loot sales are lowering the last purchase so much that the whole market is in a flux because the, the devaluation because that the hot shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if those prices stay as low as they are as these stores reopen, I probably also wouldn't want to bring my shoe back, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. that, that's what I was saying because, I mean, I even look at it from, from the angle of New Yorkers and I'm like, all right, is it's not it's not worth you know the he the the uh, the fear of like you saying like oh man I'm I'm playing Russian roulette now. Granted, I mean you know like I said, people have been going to Flight Club for you know almost 20 years at this point. I mean you you I mean I I can't tell you an experience I've had where I sold something where where I dropped something off and then it was like fucking a clusterfuck. But um. If you know, if the you know, the, if it really happens with Flight Club is like, sorry, then yeah, yeah then now it, it almost becomes. But then I think also, what that does in, in in a whole is if 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 the consignment shops that are fucking, and I'm gonna use this the word, and maybe I shouldn't, maybe it's not politically correct, but the shops that are raping people, if now it goes more to a uh, like a, a person to person or like even when you start getting stock X or something like that in the mix where stock X to me is like, it's more of a buyer's market where, you know, you pretty much can control, like you could put in a cheap ass bid and if someone's like, fuck, I need it. Whereas, yeah. you know, so I think stock, like maybe the market for a lot of this shit goes down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Flight Club is very expensive. A because it's a tourist trap. B because they fucking take twenty percent of your sale. Whereas you yeah. get like Stadium and, and Goat. Where I mean, granted, you know, Goat is affiliated with Flight Club, but like they're taking nine, you know, ten percent of your sale. So. Yeah, you might be right. Some people might have like Stockholm syndrome about it because they don't know where else to go. Mm -hmm. mm. Like you know. Earlier, like earlier, I said, like, it'd be a good thing to just use them as a reference and sell it yourself. But mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of, like, beyond people's, like, workload for it. Like, some people aren't going to put that much effort into, like, dealing with the person mm -hmm. and then, like, right. dealing with their shit. Because we I'm all know. To take it to the shop and. Get yeah, it. or, like, meeting them up in a weird place. Like, how do you ask for the money first? Like, how does this go? Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. the trust, it 
to be a actual reseller full time without one of these places is probably a nightmare. Yeah, it's wow. just an eight hour job, I think, at that point. Like it's just like a regular nine to five, essentially. I don't think we'll ever get back to the point where where like you you know, I remember being in college and taking, you know, getting a box and, and, and paying the postage and you know, shipping the shoe and then like, you know, and then you run the risk again, you know, the person doing the charge back and like, you you know, all of this shit that could have went wrong mm-hmm. with, with sh- selling shoes. And I think we've gotten so spoiled in terms of there being some type of middleman, there being a, oh man, I don't have to authenticate shit. I can have someone yeah. do the authenticating. I can, you know, I don't have to run the risk of meeting someone in person and, and get my life taken. Like it, it, we've gotten, we've gotten so spoiled with that. Yeah. So I don't ever see it going away, but I, I you know, at the same time, I'm like, you know, St- StockX has its own problems. Goat has its own problems. Yeah. So, you know, eBay, not bad. eBay, mm. eBay, eBay. so interesting. I'm sorry, go ahead, Luke. What were you going to say? Yeah, eBay is filled with fakes. Yes. It's like flooded with fakes. But mm-hmm. not not for the I'm saying uh, from the seller perspective, not as the buyer. Uh I would yeah. agree with I would agree with L and say that uh, if I was going to buy something, I even though there's many problems with the way StockX uh, authenticates things, I'd probably buy from StockX before eBay, but as mm-hmm. a seller, that is a great sort of uh minimal minimal uh minimal middleman. I guess mm-hmm. so, yeah. Cuz it No, go go go. Well, no, I, I didn't answer the Lawrence's question earlier about the flight club. You can finish first. I'll, I'll get into it. Oh, no, just I'm saying it's, it's less about, like, them pe- people, like, being in your virtual personal space. Like, mm-hmm. with eBay, you don't have to deal with them DMing. There's, like, a platform that and they have rules and regulations on stuff. It's just a little better um, to sell on there to me. Maybe So maybe people will go there. I don't know. But, yeah, kick it to you, yeah. uh, Luke. Uh, f- yeah, with flight club, uh, the – yeah, if they lose all their customers from, uh, they lose all their consignments from LA, uh, it could go one of two ways. It's either they try to recover the funds to gain the trust of the public again, which will probably end up having them close that LA store down anyway to afford it. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you're going to have to pay for the damages in the store. You'd have to pay for the sneakers if you're going to do that. Uh, and then you'd have to, you know, reopen again and uh, like have the pay everybody's in salary it's just not going to happen i don't think so i think it, yeah we might actually see the la location close uh you know or they open back up again and just try to keep the customers customer base happy but yeah I, we might lose we might lose flight club in the next 10 years well you know what i don't with, with, with nike adidas and all these like brands that you can purchase from like off the sneakers app you don't have to worry about any authentication or whatever but I think when you're buying from a secondary market, you want to see it in person as much as you can. That's the mm-hmm. only thing that Flight Club has going for it. So you think that, like, because they have the in-person... Yeah, but they... Mm, I don't know, man. Even, I mean, even online, I guess you... I don't. I mean, I don't know. It's just when you're buying from them, because there's known fakes in these places, I think less in Flight Club than others like StockX or, you know, other platforms. Right. There is that uh, you want to touch it sort of thing. Pause. Um, so I think that might get them back up and running. I just, yeah, I, you're, you are, I think right though, cause things are moving online so quickly that mm-hmm. that's going to be the focus in years coming. Um, damn, this is, I didn't even, this is a, a more thought provoking conversation. Than I thought we were going to have, honestly. Yeah. I'm surprised too. Yeah. So, I mean, if they close the L.A. one, do they even bother keeping the New York one? And they could just do all online shit and have drop-offs like stock. Mm. Nah, I think, because I, I, honestly, I think New York is still a, a tourist yeah. attraction. But here's where I think they honestly went wrong. And I know this is, you know, maybe I'm thinking a little too deep, but why the fuck didn't they get the merchandise out of the store when you look at when you look at 
jewelry, I, you know, being the fact that I, I work in the jewelry industry for so long, when, when it's time to close up, that shit goes in a, a vault, a, a safe. Right. Now, granted, I know you're dealing with sneakers, so it's a lot harder to put in a vault in a safe and lock up. But if, for example, because of COVID, stores have been, you know, physical stores have been pretty much closed since March. And yeah. if you have merchandise in a store that is, you know, we're, that is, you know, we're talking their sneakers that are, you know, $30,000, $40,000, you know, it would be in your best interest to get the merchandise out, especially if, you know, we're dealing with COVID. Yeah. Um, now, granted, no one knew that we were going to, you know, deal with a, um, you know, we were going to deal with such a, a incident in terms of police brutality that was going to set off America. You know, no one predicted that. But, but what I'm saying is, you have to take some precaution in terms of, you know, granted, this, these are not your sneakers, your, your store, but yeah. I feel like a lot of these retail stores did nothing, especially, and looking at it from the consignment, the sneaker aspect of it, they did nothing to protect customers. Flight Club true. took out the sneakers after LA got looted and then, you know, the, the country was in an uprising. Now, granted, a lot of these stores just closed down on a, on a, like, you know, you got to shut down by this and this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if these places, if they were, if Flight Club was able to pause uh, merchandise from being purchased during COVID, because they pause a lot, like a lot of the higher price items you cannot purchase during their store being shut down, mm -hmm. then I feel like they should have taken the precaution to get the shit out of the fucking store. I think uh, I, I think L has a good case. I think it might shut down. That's a good lawsuit right there. Can well, I mean, in those in those uh, waivers, if it's like your loss, your loss. If like you know, if they have something where it's just like, well, you know, whatever, then they mm -hmm. can't do that. But there might be a case for a class action lawsuit because of the neglect of everybody that they did it to. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a lawyer, but. We are not lawyers. None of no. us are lawyers. Ast astoundingly, none of us have law degrees. In yeah. my honest opinion, in my in my heart of hearts, I feel like that yes, yeah, something like they they definitely. I mean, I I know the wording of the the way that there's the agreement in Flight Club. You know, we assume yeah. responsibility. Blah blah blah. But if if you are fucking, you know, thousands of people who have shop with you for years have made you the entity that you are right and if and if you fail i feel like they just like like i was i was really shocked that they failed to get the merchandise out of the store that was my my thing because even when it was when they were being looted originally i was like oh okay well what you know they're gonna get some bullshit sneakers or yeah. they're gonna get you know what they I, i'm sure i'm like fight club didn't they, there's no way they kept anything of value yeah. in that store yeah, you said you thought it was just going to be all new Yeezys. That's what I'm saying. You think it's going to be some Yeezys? You think it's going to be some some Jordans? I said, you know, you know, maybe. But when you start, when I see a video of a kid and he has fucking Air Mags that are forty thousand dollars, you know yeah. that, you know that, and he's, and I'm like, you, like you're telling me Flight Club was that negligent and just leaving the shit in there? Yeah. That would be infuriating to me. So yeah, we'd have yeah. to see what they do next. They might they might not have a choice. They might have to just to avoid being shut down completely, they might have to just to surrender the LA store and pay everybody back. Um from now on, all legal questions are now directed towards Lawrence, mm -hmm. who's our official lawyer, yeah. who also <laughs> has law in his name. So yeah. he is <laughs> our guy for all these questions. Lawrence the law man. Lawrence the Lawman. Lawrence the Lawman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. That's the <laughs> that's the name of the episode. That's great. <laughs> All right, Chris, bring it home. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh uh, damn, that's fucking. Oh, I I mean round two, right? That means that you could do the same shit to the round. You could sue round two. And we don't know what the contract thing. is well, with round two. Round two is a little different in terms. Oh, that's of, what, yeah, that's right. They buy the the merchandise 
it's all oh, that's people. that's yeah so that's not even oh They're well fine. Yeah. Okay. Round two. Yeah. Round two is the like you said. There, once you know they either cash you out or you trade in your shit. So there's no like riff. Riff is another example. Riff L A. Or you know Riff L A. is is a perfect example of the consignment shop that you know that dealt with shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm trying to you know, cover me for a second because I'm trying to look up what what the like the guidelines of a class action lawsuit are. It's a bunch of people gotta be angry. That's it. I'm telling you, man. You gonna feel real stupid in two seconds. Yeah. Did you guys see that Korean baseball is back? <laughs> Did you guys see that? No, we have no sports to talk about. So. <laughs> Name the best Korean baseball player. Uh, it's not any of the players. It's the cheerleaders. They're the best. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, this guy has glasses on, and he hit a home run. It was crazy. <laughs> he, was uh, like, he was like, I don't have to run with these on. I'll just be really good at hitting. It's, he's like an anime character. All right, so wait, wait, wait. Here, here. All right, okay. so a plaintiff sues a defendant or a number of defendants on behalf of a group or class of absent parties. Yeah. A lot of people want to want to sue. They need like a lot of Yeah, backing. but on behalf of a group or class of absent parties. So what would the group or class be? The people who got their shit stolen and didn't get paid back. And then you sue Flight Club for negligence. We, the sneakerheads of L.A., <laughs> go to sue. Uh, that this is. I didn't even think about this. Yeah, Not that the, I think this is actually going to happen. Monumental in the monumental 2021 case of sneakerheads v. Flight Club. <laughs> I mean, that would be the flyest uh, court case that's ever existed. Do you imagine I mean, all the L.A. Uh, fucking sneakerheads in one place? Just could you imagine the merchandise on a judge? Could you imagine the merchandise <laughs> that comes out of this? Everybody gets a fucking line. Sean gets a line. Travis Scott gets a line. Everybody's doing sneakerheads v. Flight Club. <laughs> oh, yo, that's funny. <laughs> Just the courtroom, just flexing. Just, <laughs> just the bape shark heads in the back of the room going. <laughs> <laughs> Rub- <laughs> oh, Man. they're like calling Nikki Diamonds to the stand. Yeah. Hilarious. Oh, be so goofy. This is a good sketch idea that we'll never execute on. Okay. Yeah, put it out into the universe that we're never going to get it done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny though. Damn, man. All right. All Are right. I think we're good. I think we're good. I, I honestly think we're good. I think, you know, we are. I think we had a pretty fun episode, all things considered. What, yeah, what think... am I naming the episode again? <laughs> Lawrence <laughs> DeLaw, <laughs> the man. <laughs> Dor- Lawrence the lawyer. The lawyer. The lawyer? Yeah, Lawrence the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, wait, hold on. Shout out to Kanye for putting money where his mouth used to be and now is again, I guess. Yeah. And he was out in Chicago on the ground level. Uh, so uh, that was cool. I was worried about him speaking in general. We all uh, were. Yeah, and he didn't and just and gave him some money to George Floyd, his daughter, and uh, was in the streets. In the streets. Mm-hmm. Go for so Kanye. Welcome um, back to the, the, the light side of the force. Well, I don't know. Who knows how long uh, he's going to uh, be no, here. Listen, let's not... Let's not <laughs> say anything. You're you right. Know, you're right. You're Kanye right. Can be, you're you know, right. Mm-mm. Nope. We're not doing that. Uh, we're not doing that. We're not I mean, welcoming anywhere. We're just gonna go. What, what are you doing next, Kanye? If he, you know, if that's what he did for, you know, if he, you know, donated his money, that's awesome. You know, everyone listening to this podcast, make sure you donate. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I I just find places to donate to at this point now. I'm just like, okay, here's money. Sign here's the like, petitions too. Sign the petitions, email. Like, you know, sometimes I'll see these things where they've already got a pre-written email. Oh, that swipe up shit is fire. 
It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, I've done that. I hit as many places as I could with that shit. Copy, paste, mm-hmm. boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, just, if, you know, for every for the listeners out there, if you can't be on the front line protesting, even, you know, we have a lot of foreign listeners, you know, there's, there's plenty of funds. We see a, the, the whole world is, you know, is, is taking part in this. And it's, it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful thing to see, you know, everyone just realize that, you know, black people fucking matter and there should be no reason why you know this is something that's just continuously going on where you know police and are are abusing their powers and 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 i think i'm just you know, i'm 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 taking back and i'm just you know hopefully this continues and we see some real change in this world yeah mm-hmm. so yes, shout out to our foreign listeners um like just exactly what Elle said. I mean, shout out to everyone here that's doing their thing. Um, and you know, shout out to everybody that's doing the right thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, you can follow us on social media. I, it feels weird promoting after that nice thing that uh, Lawrence just said. So you just, if, if you're listening to this, you probably do. If you don't follow us or support us individually, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Um, but support the cause that's going on right now. Cause that's the most important thing. And mm-hmm. uh, just stay safe. Uh, you know, and just remember that you're, if you're a part of this, you're a part of the right side, and this is the biggest change in civil rights in a, the longest time. We had all 50 states protesting at once. Fucking 18 other countries were protesting with us. This shit is crazy. So I guess that's yep. it. Anything else, guys? Is that good? That's it. Everybody stay safe out Everyone there. Everyone stay safe. Please do. And, oh, yeah. Right. Also, for those of you, uh, for also, uh, for you sale people, real quick before I go, Mr. Porter Sales Live, take advantage of it. Take a look at it. It's 50% off a lot of things. All right, y'all be cool. All right, peace out. Peace.